Hello Accounting 201 students. This is part four in our chapter four, Accrual Accounting Concepts. In this chapter we are going to learn how to prepare adjusting entries for accruals. Remember the last one was on deferrals, for adjusting entries for deferrals. We're going to describe the nature and purpose of the adjusted trial balance. The second category of adjusting entries is accruals. Prior to an accrual adjustment, the revenue account and the related asset account or the expense account and the related liability account are understated. Thus, the adjusting entry for accruals will increase both a balance sheet and an income statement account. So these accrual adjusting entries are made to record revenues that are earned and or expenses incurred in the current accounting period that have not been recognized through daily activity, sorry, daily entries. Revenues earned but not yet recorded at the statement date are accrued revenues. Accrued revenues may accumulate with the passing of time as in the case of interest revenue. These are unrecorded because the earning of interest does not involve daily transactions. Companies do not record interest revenue on a daily basis because it is often impractical to do so. Accrued revenues also may result from services that have been performed but not yet billed nor collected as in the case of commissions and fees. These may be unrecorded because only a portion of the total service has been provided and the clients won't be billed until, until the service has been completed. An adjusting entry records the receivable that exists at the balance sheet date and the revenue earned during the period. Prior to adjustment, both assets and revenues are understated. An adjusting entry for accrued revenues results in an increase a debit to an asset account and an increase a credit to a revenue account. And here it just says an adjusting entry serves two purposes to show that the receivable shows the receivable that exists and records the revenue earned which is what I just stated earlier. Adjusting entry for accrued revenues again is going to increase the debits and increase your revenue account, the credit side. An example, if we go back to our Sierra Corporation, in October Sierra earned $200 for guide services that were not billed to clients before October 31. So our adjusting entry is to debit our receivable, credit our service revenue. This is how it looks like in the journal. This is our T account posting. So you can see how our balances have changed. The summary, when you use it, do accounting for accrued revenues, these are the examples, interest, rent, services, performed but not collected. The reason we do it is because revenues have been earned but not yet received in cash or recorded. The accounts before adjustment, they were assets were understated, revenues were overstated, and the adjusting entry is the debit assets and credit revenues. Now if you look at the expense, accrued expenses, expenses are incurred but not yet paid in cash or recorded. The adjusting entry results in an expense recorded before the cash payment. Some accrued expenses often occur in the following, rent, interest, taxes, and salaries. An adjusting entry serves two purposes. It records the obligations and it recognizes the expenses. Adjusting entry for accrued expenses are going to increase the expense account with a debit and increase the liability account with a credit. An example going back to our Sierra Corporation, Sierra Corporation signed a three-month note payable in the amount of $5,000 on October 1. The note requires Sierra to pay interest at an annual rate of 12%. So we have to figure out how much interest we owe. We're going to take $5,000, the face value of the note, times the interest rate, times the time in terms of one year, which is one twelfth. So the interest we need to record is $50. The journal entry would look like this. Interest expense 50, interest payable 50. And then our T account posting, our adjusting entry 50 as a debit, 
and we're going to credit interest payable for 50. Notice we do write ADJ for adjusting entry so we know what kind of entry it was. Another illustration with Sierra Corporation says they last paid salaries on October 26th. The next payment of salaries will not occur until November the 9th. The employees received total salaries of $2,000 for a five-day work week or $400 a day. Thus accrued salaries at October 31 are $1,200, 400 times three days. And you can see just looking at the calendar there. That was the last payday and there's the next one. Sierra Corporation last paid salaries on October 26th. The next payment of salaries will not occur until November the 9th. The employees receive total salaries of $2,000 for a five-day work week or $400 per day. Thus accrued salaries on October 31 are 1,200. 400 times three days. There's a journal entry. Debit salaries expense. Credit salaries payable for $1,200. Recorded in the T accounts. Notice again they did ADJ, so we know that's the adjusting entry. Debit for salaries expense, credit for salaries payable. And summarizing, the examples of accrued expenses are interest, rent, and salary. The reason for adjustment is because the expenses have been incurred but not yet paid in cash or recorded. The accounts before adjustment, the expenses are understated and the liabilities are understated. So the adjusting entry is to debit expenses and credit liabilities. I wrote down the do it 4-2 on page 203. Tammy Krause is the new owner of Tammy's Computer Services. At the end of July 2012, her first month of ownership, Tammy is trying to prepare monthly financial statements. She has the following information for the month. At July 31, Krauss owed employees $1,100 in salaries that the company will pay in August. So you would debit salaries expense, salaries and wages expense for $1,100 and credit salaries and wages payable for $1,100. The second example, on July 1, Krauss borrowed $20,000 from a local bank on a 10-year note. The annual interest rate is 9%. So figuring it out, you'll take 20,000 times 9% or 0 0.09 times 1 12th. Gives you $150. You'll debit interest expense and credit interest payable for $150. And the last one, service revenue unrecorded in July totaled $1,600. So we will debit accounts receivable $1,600 and credit the service revenue. Summary of the basic relationship. And this is both all the adjusting entries we've talked about. This would be a good study point for you to use when you're preparing for the test. You have type of adjustment or prepaid expenses, accounts before adjustment and assets are overstated, expenses are understated, and then it gives you your adjusting entry, debit expenses, credit assets, unearned revenues, your liabilities are overstated, your revenues are understated, you debit liabilities and credit revenues, your accrued revenues, assets are understated, your revenues are understated, so you're going to debit assets and credit revenues. And the last one, accrued expenses. Your expenses are understated and your liabilities are understated. You're going to debit your expense account and credit your liabilities. The adjusted trial balance is created after all adjusting entries are journalized, journalized and posted. The adjusted trial balance purpose is to prove the equality of debits, debit balance and credit balances in the ledger. The adjusted trial balance is the primary basis for the preparation of financial statements. Here's an example of the adjusted trial balance and you can see the accounts in red are the ones that have been affected by the adjusting entries.
Companies can prepare financial statements directly from the adjusted trial balance. The three statements they create are the income statement, the retained earnings statement, and the balance sheet. You can see with the income statement, you have the revenues, which is a service revenue, comes here. Then you have your expenses listed, and it figure out your net income. And then when you create your retained earnings statement, you have your retained earnings, which are from your trial balance. You add your net income from your income statement, less your dividends, which is from your trial balance, and it gives you your retained earnings for October 31. And the last statement is the adjusted or is the balance sheet. You're going to do your assets first to get your total assets. Notice how they listed the equipment, less accumulated depreciation equipment, and brought the balance over here. Then you have your liabilities and stockholders equity, and all of this comes from your adjusted trial balance. The retained earnings is going to come from your retained earnings statement that was on the previous slide.